Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm back. The devil thought he had me, but I'm here. I'm up. I'm walking. I'm grateful. And here again, I'm Evangelist Donna Jones, and this is Be You Say Bye. And I'm, I, I cannot tell you what God has done for me, how he has taken care of me through the heart surgery that I had June the 12th. And if you didn't know why I wasn't here, look, let me tell you, I can't give you no organ recital because then I'll be bringing up stuff that you're not really interested in. But through it all, I depended and I trust, trusted in God to take care of me. And he's done all, I mean... Everything and everybody have been just awesome, wonderful. And um, in fact, this is the this is so cute to me. And and then I'm gonna pray, okay? But the doctor said, I'm gonna keep you sleep for another day. And I just woke up and I saw my sister and I said, Vicky, is that you? And he, he go on, wake her up, get her up, do whatever, because you know, she's up. She's she's already. I'm functioning after heart surgery, and I feel good. I thank God for the recovery and and the the um, continuing to take care of me. Thanking Him for all of the nurses that in my therapy. I'm just, I'm just excited, but I'm mostly excited about Jesus. I'm, I'm just giving him all the praise because he was a surgeon. He already knew that what uh, utensils to use. He, he knew the doctor that was going to do my surgery, and he used his hands and, and the nurses around him. So, look, I'm back. That's all I'm going to say. I am back. And I'm just thanking him, thanking him. And so, Father, I want to give you the glory. I want to acknowledge you. I want to lift you up. I want to thank you, hallelujah, for your goodness and your mercy. I want to thank you that grace, grace, grace follows me everywhere I go. And I'm just grateful for, for knowing that I chose, I chose to serve you. I chose to be a servant and a vessel. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I am still excited about Jesus. I'm still excited. And there is nothing and no one. Oh, I call my sister accidentally by mistake. And I'm going to tell her I call her back. But I called her by mistake. Oh, she's cracking. She's cracking. <laughs> but the, <laughs> see, I'm already messy. I'm, I'm back in my chair. <laughs> I'm excited. She's saying hello, hello, hello. But that's okay. That's okay. We do these things, <laughs> and you know God will take care of us. But and and my 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 beautiful my beautiful beautiful sister. But I give him praise. And I was looking up the um, axe head in uh, 2 Kings 6, 1 through 7. And I, a lot of people don't really, really understand the axe head. So, again, 2 Kings 6, 1 through 7. And, and what I want to do, he said 2 Kings uh, 6, 1 through 7. Is it just kind of say this real quick, and, and I'm going to read this to the point of, excuse me, excuse me, that you'll understand. You'll understand. And it says, And the sons of the prophets said unto Elijah, Behold, now the place where we were where where we dwell with thee is too straight. For us, let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take 
Hence, every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. He answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. Cut down wood now. And it said, But as one was um, felling, filling a beam, Filling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. You know how you borrow something and then you tear it up? You know how you borrow something and you lose it? Well, this axe head fell. He had borrowed it from a friend. That's what we do, and we don't. then we don't know what to do. We get all willy-dilly and nervous in the service. But he said, Oh, this fell, and I borrowed it. And the man of God, check it out, the man of God said, where fell it? And he answered him and he showed him the place and he cut down a stick. Now, he cut down a stick to get the axe head. First of all, I didn't, you don't, we know. Okay, calm down. You can tell I'm getting excited. Axe heads don't float. They just would normally go all the way to the bottom of the water. Okay, but it said here, he cut down a stick and cast it in hither, and the iron did swim. Therefore he said, take it up to thee, and he put out his hand and took the axe head. Come on now. Who, you know, if you drop an axe head, you know it's heavy, into the water, it's going to sink. But the man of God, see, sometimes this is what the problem is. We don't want to listen to the man of God. And the first thing I would, I would say that the that came to his mind, oh God, I gotta spend a lot of money cause this is not mine and I'm gonna have to go and get another ax head for my friend. Here I am trying to make money and I got to spend money. That's how we think. And I it, and I can't, I can't help you. I don't know why we think. And then we get nervous in the service. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Somebody help me. Now, un, n normally somebody would tell you, I'm going to cut down a stick. You reach down and pick it up. You would question that. You would just, I, hey, what's that stick going to do? That stick ain't strong enough to pull up that. It said the, the, the uh, axe head swam, so it must have swam toward them for him to reach out and take a stick and pull it toward him for him to tell the man, uh, excuse me, uh, I got the axe head right here. What's the problem? Can't you reach down and pick it up? He had to tell the man to reach down and pick it up. Duh. See, that's just it. When God do something, when God say something, when God show you something, instead of questioning it, we need to react. We know, oh, but God said that, and I'm going to get busy and do that. And that's what's going on today. Things are going on around us, and we as saints, we're not doing anything. We go on our job, and then we go home, get on the couch, and cover up. Some of us don't even go home and fix dinner for our children. Some of us, we so tired, we, we, we give them a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a glass of milk, and we go get in the bed. We ain't hugged them. We haven't kissed them. And, and just things are going on all over the world. And I'm telling you, we've got to wake up. We've got to get busy. As the pastor said, it's time that the, we, we let the Holy Ghost use us. See, you ain't got to have no feelings. He didn't need no feelings. He's, he should have looked down and saw the axe head there and went on and picked it up. See, we, we want things to happen before we react to what God has told us. And in this story, it said, you know, uh, you, he sent you some help. 
He sent you a man of God. And let me tell you about the man of God. The man of God had faith. And he believed that when he cut this act, this, tri this stick down out of this tree, he, he knew God was going. He, mm, I believe that he was pr a praying man. And he prayed that ax head over there. And that's what we got to do. We got to go around people and we've got to invite them to come to church. And, and, and let's say, why do we wait 10 years to go back and say, girl, I asked you to come to church 10 years ago. Um, why don't we go back the next week, not Sunday, the next week and witness to them and be a friend to them pray for them, listen to them, that we can encourage them, because we can't make nobody do anything, but we can encourage them. And it's just like when I got ready to get ready for the hospital, people say, you just don't act like you, you care. Yes, I do care. Duh. I'm going to have heart surgery. I care, but you, I, I couldn't fret. I couldn't worry. I would have tied God's hands. I'm not tying his hands from nothing that he can do for me. Zero. I prayed. I thanked him that I was going to recover, recover. I prayed and thanked him that no hurt, harm, or danger would come to me. No weapon formed against me would prosper. I prayed and I believed because I'm a believer. And see, when you be, when you say and break, take God's word back to him, like this man of God did, I knew he took the word back. God, you can do that. I'm trusting you to, to bring that ax head over here. I'm trusting you and believing you. And he didn't go through no, he didn't even have a Bible. The word was in him. See, we got to go and hunt a Bible. We got to go and get... Uh, it approved from other people, uh, preachers and teachers and prophets. And no, 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 no. Get the word in you. Get the word that you can trust God. Get the word in you because he said, I supply all your needs. See, I, that he, that man had a need. He needed that ax head. And he, so he had a need. And it's just like today. I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump into the water right now. But every man, woman, boy, and girl on this earth, vote. Go and vote. And, and, and as I told, I, I told my brother, don't you never tell nobody you don't, you, you don't vote. Go vote. We need every individual to go and register, get somebody into your church and, and register you. I know I jumped the gun. Yeah. Mm. I jumped the gun all the time, so y'all should be used to me. But vote, vote. Take your wheelchair, have somebody push you to the vote, uh, uh, wherever you vote. But in the meantime, <clears throat> this man, this man of God, he used that faith he had. And this is what we have to do. We have to pray. He prayed. And sometimes we're so stubborn. I am not understanding why we just can't trust the unction that God gives us. And as I said, we got to go and uh, can, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this scenario and then you waiting, sitting there and waiting for a word. Oh, that's a confirmation. No, 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 cool. You don't have to go and tell nobody nothing. You just do what God said. That's it. Do what God said. Trust God. Because like I said, he said he'll supply all your needs. You, you sitting there and all you got to do is raise your hands up and say, God, I believe. I believe that I'm rich. I believe that abundance coming to me. There was a pastor and his name was um, Thompson, Leroy Thompson. He said this, money coming to me. In Jesus' name. That's the Bible. And people want to say, well, well, we all into money. But see, my money is I want to take care of my bills, but I also want to help you. See, I'm not stingy. I'm not selfish. I want to help you. I want to put gas in your car. I want to put food on your table. But I, if, if, if you're not praying and asking God, see, I'm praying and telling God I want to help somebody. I'm, look, I'm alive.
And so I want to be a vessel to somebody. I want to look at somebody and they just get energized like that. Energized in the bunny. You know, he's so energized and he don't never give up. I'm not giving up. Hallelujah. I'm not giving up. So he, this, this man of God, he was a helping hand. And, and this is what it, I got here. The helping hand of God is constantly with us through all events. I don't care what you're going through. I got issues too, but I don't care what you're going to. You cast them issues on God and keep it moving. And through all events of everyday life, something is going on every day. And you need to be prepared. Get into that word of God and know that God said, I, I'm, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Because, see, I understand things are going on in, in, in the hospitals. People are dying. Babies are dying. You know what? I, and I don't know, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, I might have to have this uh, tape cut. But <laughs> you can send somebody to Mars, but you can't put them fires out. I, I'm having a hard time with that. Y'all pray for me. Yeah, you, you, and you that's listening, pray for me. People are people are losing their homes. Their they they their be their belongings, and I, this is not of God. I don't care what you say. This is not of God. Them fires are not of God. So if you lost your home, get on your knees and start praying. Because guess what? When you call out to Jesus. He going to give you better. That's just like Job. When Job lost his cattle, he lost his wife. God gave him the best of the best, double, double for his trouble. He got sores all over him. He was sick. And he thought, you know, he, he even had to get away from his uh, friends because he's, they were saying, what did you do, Job? What, 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 what caused this? The, the devil calls them fires. And I'm just saying, whew, I'm telling, I'm, at, I'm not telling God nothing. I'm asking God, find a way to put these fires out, Lord. And, and through it all, if you trust God, God is always present. He never leaves you. And if you feel that God is not around, guess what? You left God. If you feel he's not helping you, you're not listening to what he's telling you to do. This is the reason why we, we struggle. We're not supposed to struggle. And, and, and there might be sandpaper people around you. But what you have to do is you still have to love them. You can't say... I'll do it for you, but I'm not going to do it for you. You can't be selfish. You, you got to trust God, just like this man of God did. And I, I'm just loving this. And as he said, as, <clears throat> but as one was fought, fell in a beam, the axe head fell into the water, into the water. And it, <clears throat> it didn't say the, the man of God jumped in the water. It said the man cut down a stick. See, a stick. We, we don't think to listen. Okay, God, what are you saying to me? Uh, wh where do you want me to go? H how do you want me to do that? God, you know, I, I'm, you know I, I don't have a car. A uh, God, I don't even have a job. I don't have no money. we we got to talk to God. How, and you want, you, you want me to go to Springfield? Uh, oh, you want, you want me to go to Africa? God, do you know how much that costs? God already knows he's not going to tell us to do something that he's not going to provide for us. That's how come I'm excited about Jesus, because I see that I haven't, I, I, I'm just happy. I, I, I have this joy, an unspeakable joy, and I used to say, uh, Acts 26, 2, I make my own self happy. 
Uh uh-uh. uh. You know what? I do make my own self happy. But God makes me smile. God makes me laugh. I'm excited about what He's doing in my life. I'm excited about my children and my grandchildren and my great grandchildren. I'm excited about them. But you know what? I can't make them do nothing. All I have to, what I'm supposed to do is be a vessel unto them. And how many of you are vessels that people, your children, your family can see the God in the inside of you. How many people? See, it's time for us to get outside the walls of the church and go out there into the world and be, <clears throat> go walk in the mall, wave at somebody. Hey, girl, you ain't got to stop. I, I, I don't go, I used to say I don't go in the mall because People want to stop me. Well, that's, that's, you know what? That's what's being selfish. People want to stop me just to say hello, and I don't want to go in there because they're going to stop me from walking, and I'm trying to lose weight. That was, Those were all my excuses, okay? We got too many excuses. This man. Oh, hey, somebody, somebody. I dropped my ax, and it was borrowed. You thought that they were just going to come around, the, the whole group of y'all going to come around, and get your ass. You, he didn't even get down. The man of God had to tell him to reach down. Get the ax. I ain't going to add to that. Because I could add to that. But I'm not going to add to that. Because I know that God is a good God. And so I'm excited about God saying, well done, my faithful servant. Well done. And, and this is what, <clears throat> excuse me. All about what's going on in our lives. We have to we have to work things out. We have to trust God. And if we can't trust God, I'm just gonna tell you, there's nothing happening. I trust God. And 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 you know what? Um I, I wanted to tell you that this question somebody asked me. And I'm going to get it right right quick. Lord, forgive me for not having this together. But uh, we got to be a watchman over things. We, we got to watch. And, 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 and just like uh, Jehovah uh, God, he, 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 he said, uh, who did God make a watchman for the house of uh, Egypt? I mean, Israel. We, we, we got to watch things. We got to, God wants us to be a watchman. I'm a watchman. I'm looking out for you. I'm praying for you. I'm lifting you up. And most of all, I'm lifting and acknowledging God so that he'll use my hands. He'll use my ears. He'll use my mouth. He'll use my feet. He'll put me where he wants me to be. He takes care of me. I got them thousands and thousands of angels camping around me. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Sometimes when God unction you to take another direction, he's keeping you from hurt, harm, and danger. Uh, I'm not used to going that way. I don't know why I want to go go that way. He's unctioning you so that you won't be hurt. Oh, I ain't used to going that way. Oh, make a change. Because in the end, when you find out, he just saved your life. That's what he's all about. He's not about death. He's about life. He's about a, a, a abundance. He, it, oh, mm. He say, I, I, I come, he didn't give you an answer. I come to give you life. Choose. And I choose life. And I am here to say I'm alive. Amen. So God is just a good God. He's a good God. And I, I just don't, I just don't know how to tell you that he's worth worshiping. And I'm a worshiper. I praise him and I magnify him. I glorify him. And, and I love talking about God. See, I don't like really talking about the dumb stuff, but I have to listen sometimes. But God gives me an opening where I say, you know what? Mm, God is better than that. God is stronger than that. God is a God that he's not going to hurt you. That's the part I like. 
He's not going to hurt you. What's going to hurt you is you trying to make a decision on do you want to do it or not. Because <clears throat> he ain't going to push you into it. Satan will push, push you into stuff. But God ain't going to push you into it. He's going to give you, you either you want to or you don't. And, I, and, and guess what? When he asks you to do something, he's going to move on and get somebody else to do it. But he's going to come back to you. Because he's going to come back. Because there's going to be a time to, I wish I'd have done what God told me to do. Y'all in the turmoil, you know, they say what well, go around, come around. The turmoil is not going to be nice. And you are going to find that God had love, peace, and joy for you. Amen. And I'm just excited about love, peace, and joy. And so I, I give praise for all those who are changing their, your lives and, and, and accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Don't take long that uh, as you uh, begin to uh, say, Lord, come into my life. I need you. He's right there. He's right there. That's all you have to do. And God will. He'll just. Move into your life and he'll show you and send you places to go. Find a church home, a word church that's teaching the word. Now, I'm suggesting Restoration Urban Ministries because I've learned more and more and more right there. Two dynamic pastors, Pastor Irvin Williams and Pastor Ernest Jones. Dynamic men of God. So just come on and, and join us and come and hear the word. And, and you know what? When you put the word first, things begin to happen. And I'm just grateful that things begin to happen in my life that I, I let God move in. And so here we go. Um, we got to be like, um, like Moses, um, don't be so mean and hateful and angry. He hit that rock twice, and that's how come he didn't see the promised land. Well, this is, you know, we, 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 when God tell us to do something, we got to have some peace about it. And if you don't have peace at that moment, stop. Stop. Calm down. Take a deep breath. Things going on in your home. You ready to go off. Take a deep breath. Go in the bathroom. Look in the mirror. Get that off of you. I don't care if you had to stomp, fall out. You're in the bathroom. Lock the door. But get it off of you. Because that's Satan. He don't want to, you to enjoy your husband or your, the husband to enjoy your wife or your children. And we got to put Satan under our feet. Amen. Stomping. Stomping. Hallelujah. I stomping. In Jesus' name. And this is Donna. And this is Be You Say Bye. God bless you. And vote. Amen. <laughs>